Good evening for Telesur. I'm Cody Weddle in Caracas, Venezuela. We continue with our special coverage of the stalled peace talks in Colombia. The FARC in Colombia has promised to free General Rubén Darío Alzalte and four others captured, quote, as soon as possible. Now, it comes after the group reached an agreement with the government and guarantor nations of Cuba and Norway. President Juan Manuel Santos says that talks will continue, adding that he expected the talks would encounter these types of difficulties. I knew this process would be difficult. Many people warned me, Mr. President, do not meddle in this process because you will have many enemies. You will go through many tough moments. Moving now to gruesome developments out of Mexico. The body of a Ugandan Catholic priest has been found in one of the many mass graves uncovered as authorities search for 43 missing students. Identified as John Senyodo, the remains of the priest were dug up over a week ago and identified through the skull and dental records. He had been missing since May. The priest was found in a mass grave with 12 other unidentified bodies in the mountain town of Cocula near Iguala. The other bodies have not yet been identified. And the outrage has spread beyond Mexico's borders. In Bolivia, staff and students of the San Andres University in La Paz marched in solidarity with Mexico. Protesters wrapped themselves in plastic bags in a gruesome visual reference to the missing bodies. One student held a sign reading Mexican drug dealing assassin state, reflecting widespread anger at the involvement of the authorities in the violence. Moving now to Ecuador, following the massive rally on Saturday in support of labor reforms, an opposition march was held yesterday in Quito, Ecuador. For their demands, here's our correspondent Liz Sherkis. A march convoked by unions against debated reforms to the labor code occurred yesterday in Quito. It was characterized by its low turnout of approximately 2,500 people reaching San Francisco Square. This comes in light of the massive rally held in favor of the reforms in Guayaquil on Saturday, with an official estimate of 100,000 people. The reforms seek to increase the rights of workers by taking actions such as incorporating some 1.5 million homemakers into the social security system. It is unheard of to be opposed to a reforms package that includes, for example, eliminating fixed contracts. This is unheard of. My God, if I was not living, I would not believe this. But it's ridiculous that the leaders of the United Workers Front, at least a part of them, are opposed to this reform. To be opposed to legislation preventing the firing of pregnant women and union leaders. I also think it's ridiculous that there is this new treatment we are giving to the firing of LGBT and workers of ethnic minorities. A faction of the workers' movement called for the National March, in which union members and opposition groups took to the streets of Quito in rejection of reforms they perceived to be unfavorable to working conditions. In the government's view, this march was supported and manipulated by the right as part of a larger destabilization campaign. The government is trying through the code and reforms to meddle with our rights. For this reason, we are in the streets telling the government to change these policies. If they do not, we will continue with actions such as this. The march was peaceful and no incidents were registered. Reforms to the labor code are currently being debated in the National Assembly with the objective of giving greater protection and rights to historically marginalized groups. Liz Sherfius, Delisord, Ecuador. And thanks to Liz. Taking a look at world news now, we start in the United States where President Barack Obama will announce immigration reforms in a matter of hours, really. Though a variety, through a variety of forms, he's expected to defer any possible deportation for up to 5 million undocumented immigrants. The move has outraged some Republicans who say that Obama is bypassing Congress, but many top Democrats have come out in strong support of the president. Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid says that the move is a positive one for the United States and that the Democrats were just sick of waiting. 
If we had it our way, President Obama would be signing his comprehensive immigration bill into law instead of an executive action. But we can't sit idly by, waiting for Republicans to act while homes are being broken up all across this nation. We've waited 511 days. All the House would have to do is take up the bill, and it would pass. It would pass overwhelmingly. Virtually every Democrat would vote for it, and many Republicans vote for it. It would pass. Republicans keep saying, give us more time. Give us more time. 511 days is enough time. Join us tonight for our special broadcast on President Obama's speech at 8 Eastern time. And moving on and staying in the United States, tomorrow we could receive a word from a grand jury on whether it will indict Darren Wilson, the officer who shot and killed Michael Brown. Here's our correspondent in Ferguson, Alexandra Hall. Residents here in Ferguson are still waiting each day for that impending verdict from a grand jury on what will be the fate of Darren Wilson, the police officer who shot and killed an unarmed black teenager, Michael Brown, here in August. On Wednesday, a human rights group said that police must respect the right of protesters to peacefully demonstrate once an announcement is made. They also said that there were serious problems with the way that law enforcement responded to initial uh, protests here in August. Uh, as we know, for the past three months, organizers have been training activists in nonviolent civil disobedience techniques. Law enforcement have also reportedly undergone extra hours um, ahead of unrest uh, after a probable non-indictment verdict. On Thursday afternoon, uh, police departments outside of Missouri, including the Atlanta Metro Police, met to discuss a collective plan of action uh, in the event that there is unrest and uh, meanwhile protests and rallies are being organized in major cities all across the United States once that announcement is made. In Ferguson, I'm Alexandra Hall for Telesur. And thanks to Alexandra. Moving now to Russia where the nation's foreign minister Sergei Lavrov says the country of North Korea is ready to resume international talks on its nuclear program without preconditions. Now, Lavrov says Kim Jong-un has expressed a desire to expand ties with Russia. Pyongyang has wanted to resume talks over nuclear power for many years, but the U.S., Japan and South Korea have blocked the dialogue until the DPRK shuts down its nuclear program. Russia slammed the U.N. resolution on North Korea's rights record as counterproductive. Lavrov says the aim of U.N. resolutions are to prosecute North Korea rather than genuine human rights concerns. They are politically motivated and aim to publicly punish rather than achieve constructive agreements regarding the concerns some countries may have. Staying in that region, the Ukrainian Prime Minister Artsenyi Yatsenyuk has called on the West to put a check on Russia. We have to do everything we can together with our European and American friends to stop and contain Russia and to urge Russia to stick and implement the means deal. Military operation is not the best solution. And we end with a cultural note tonight. The Ramallah dancer Shirin Ziyade wants to use dance moves to change the place where she grew up as she trains aspiring ballerinas to show something beautiful from Palestine. The 24-year-old opened the Ramallah Ballet Dance Center. The center aims to teach youth not only to dance, but really to think and act more positively. She also hopes to teach the tiny dancers to revolutionize traditional Palestinian culture. Plenty more on those stories and others at our website, telesurtv.net slash English. For Telesur English, I'm Cody Weddle.